This is Travis and welcome to Big T Studios. Today I'm going to be looking at installing Fedora, another Linux distribution. This one's probably the the American flavor, if you want to call it that, of Linux. It's the testing pool for Red Hat. Red Hat is a big outfit out of North Carolina. They've done great work with Linux, but their bread and butter is not so much the home user as it is corporations that need privately programmed desktop systems. And this is their testing pool that they basically allow everybody to download. It may not be as rock solid as an enterprise version, but I've not had any problems with it. Uh, so one of the things I want to do with this is I want to show uh, how to install this, unlike the previous video that had multiple drives and those little hiccups. I wanted to take out the one drive. I want to make this a one drive installation. Point blank. Just keep it simple. Now I needed to go into the chassis on the computer and unplug the extra drives. Then I needed to go into the BIOS and uncheck some of the things. Uh, now older Dells have a quirk in their BIOS that if a drive that was there before suddenly disappears, it's going to give you errors and yell at you and beep and not progress. So that's why you go into the BIOS and you uncheck these things. Now my computer shows that my SSD drive is in SATA2. Now this may be the source of my hiccup that I have later on and I also look at the boot sequence to make sure that the thumb drive gets hit first so that I can install without having to always check for something in the thumb drive. And then it'll go to the SSD. After choosing the default language, we see that under the system, there is an error symbol. And on the next screen, after we click on that error symbol, on the next screen, make certain that a check mark is on the disk that you want to use. And this is telling me that I need to reclaim my space. And that's pretty much what we want to do. We want to reclaim this so that you're, you're, basically erasing the previous disk. Now once we click that we're done, Fedora takes us to the previous screen. And as long as there are no more faults on that screen, we can begin installation. As with any installation, it's dull. Let's face it, it's duller than watching the Marvels. Ugh, man, talk about dull. Of course, once all the installation process gets done, I'm just waiting on the system to ask for a username and a password. Okay, so rather than doing this in the install sequence, it, you have to reboot. Oops, forgot to take the thumb drive out. Well, after restarting more than once, I noticed that the system is hanging. And not every installation goes as planned. That's kind of why I wanted to show this. Don't give up on it. And it's not because you did a bad job. It's just sometimes while it's in the process of writing this stuff, everything doesn't get installed satisfactorily. In the next attempt, I moved the SSD to slot zero just to make sure that it's not a positioning thing. And that's, a, that's getting inside the chassis and moving wires around. What I'm doing here is I'm more or less forcing the system to read the SSD first. Otherwise, the Windows partition on one of these other disks tries to overtake the system. Now the only thing to do is just restart the installation.
Now this time, everything restarts and the sequence is similar to a fresh start on Windows 10. Gnome, oh, I hate saying that word gnome, but if you say gnome like a garden gnome, your nerd friends will freak out and tell you, oh no, it's pronounced a gnome, as if that really makes a difference. Now, gnome is the windowing system on this particular version of Linux. It's very clean, and at the top of the left screen is the activity section. Now, depending on your installation, you might have activities, you might have a dash, like a hyphen up at the top. And when you click on it, it's going to reveal the GNOME version of Docker down at the bottom. When you click on one of these activities, which is nothing more than a program, it'll open up the program in the window or the desktop. And if you move to the right, your mouse to the right and click on it, it'll take you to a new desktop screen where you can open your activity, start another program, and instead of trying to swap from window to window, you just go to the top and click on your activity bar and move side to side from desktop to desktop. It's just trying to do its own thing, and I guess I can't blame them. It, I'm not a big fan of this, but people like it, so if they like it, they like it. Now, I keep showing off LibreOffice in all these installs that I usually do because, well, it's a free Office suite that does everything I need it to do. But one of the things that it doesn't have is it doesn't have a Microsoft Outlook equivalent. But there is one for Linux. Actually, there's many, but this one is called Evolution. It's your email evolved. Now, the reason I like this is that it, ha it has the calendar, the contacts, and the to-do lists all in one location. Since so many people use online email clients, this program might not be as necessary as it used to be, but I like my own personal sense of privacy. I don't like putting everything I'm doing on the World Wide Web. Because we're using this for um, recording, we don't always want to be tied to the web because that takes up system resources while you're trying to record and you don't want pops and clicks. Now I also want to show the installation process of Reaper. It's very straightforward. It's just a matter of navigating to the folder and you can either click on it and if you right click it'll give you an option to run it as an executable file uh, the other way is to go through the command line process which is par for the course on linux they just about prefer you do everything by command line which may be one of the reasons it still hasn't caught on as far as being user friendly Go through the questions that's being asked and of course you're going to want to install and everything you want to be positive in this because you're you're setting yourself up for uh, system integration and getting Reaper to run and of course when we finally start Reaper we're going to have a little bit of a hiccup because literally we've just installed it we've not configured the system to run it which like any system windows mac or otherwise you have to choose your audio device and your drivers so there's little things we have to do but i'm trying to save that for another video um, i'm just wanting to show what it takes to get up and running with a linux distribution and now that we see that we can even install a program as beneficial as reaper we can move on
But finally, let's look at the system resources. The CPU is running at 6%. That's not bad. And look at the memory. Memory is at 34%. Fedora and the GNOME desktop that runs what you see are every bit as modern as Windows 10, yet it is still easier on resources than any Windows 10 installation. Well, that's the nuts and bolts of this video, and I have one more installation video, and that will be AV Linux. And we'll dive into using the audio programs after we get that one installed. Thanks for watching. This is Big T at Big T Studios.